All right, did you uh, have an ad lib comment? I did. Comment? Yeah, I, I, I would love to hear it. It's going to be Browns related. At that much, right. I know. The rest is, you know, whatever who, happens. Who knows happens. where I'm going? Right. Well, thanks. Well, Les. good luck. We're all counting. Uh, on you. Yeah. Well, um, if unless that screen. Okay, there we go. <laughs> you know, we're seeing a change now in how the Browns are being viewed these days, and some of that is justifiable because of the upgrade in talent. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But some of it is also premature. I mean, they were, after all, 7, 8, and 1 last year with no victories over teams with winning records during their turnaround. Also in that premature category, I would place the notion that Jimmy Haslam has finally figured this ownership stuff out, righted the ship. I mean, a year ago, he was going into the season with Hugh Jackson coming off 1-31. and His coaching surge came down to Freddie Kitchens and Kevin Stefanski. Remember him? Haslam is reaping the rewards of John Dorsey's good work and the high draft picks that came from all that losing. I'm sorry, but I'm going to need to see a trophy hoisted around here before I buy into the narrative. In the meantime, things are looking up for a change. The good organizations sustain optimism. This one still has a lot to prove. I, are you pick, with me on that or Yes, not? absolutely. Okay. And also, uh, you might be with me on this one. The picture that showed up about, at the baptism of, uh, <laughs> of Kareem Hunt, would you suggest that uh, Dorsey and Kitchen should not wear suits and ties anywhere. <laughs> yeah, they certainly do look a little out of place, don't they? Hey, and this, and that, that was, was a good move. That was a nice gesture on their part to want to be there. You know, I, I was critical of the signing. I still, if, if I were a fan of the Cleveland Browns, born and raised here, I still wouldn't want, have wanted them to sign this guy before we even knew what his suspension was. I think the only reason they did it is that he's a great talent. And all this talk of, well, oh, all we care about is the person no, is, is clearly not the case when teams do this. So that's all. You but when, I'm, I'm rooting for, for him to turn, it, turn his life around and to be, become a, a, a better person if that's what this is all about. And, you know, if I were them and I had taken this step, I would show public support for him too. All right, let's uh, take a look at what the Browns did in this busy offseason as they uh, prepare for the uh, – uh, 2019 season coming up soon. Here you see the additions we just mentioned: Kareem Hunt and uh, Olivier Vernon, uh, Morgan Burnett. Who sounds? He uh, sounds like a stock office firm. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I just invested at Morgan Burnett. A uh, greedy Williams who signed his also sounds uh, like a financial investment. Well, guy. he made a nice <laughs> uh, investment today, signing his contract. Sheldon uh, Redwine, Austin C Seibert. Then, you've, of course, you have Odell Beckham and uh, Richardson and Murray. Uh, uh, Taki Taki is the only one not signed right now. And Mac Wilson also. Mac Wilson just sounds like a player, doesn't he? He does. And I, I'm telling you, I was all for the, the Taki Taki pick just to hear you and Doug Deacon have to say that name well, all, all season long. I've investigated. I thought that Taki Taki was from Walla Walla, Washington. But that, no, is that correct? Nor New York, New York. Okay. Oh, very good. 216-575-0403. Thought that'd is, be a how come quickie, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We got a face. <laughs> we have a Facebook question of the day, and that uh, question is, what area do you think the Browns still need to upgrade? Uh, we had it yesterday, a report that they were the third, uh, third best, uh, uh, if you add up the offense, defense, and uh, special teams, uh, they were picked as number three. Here's uh, what we're looking at now. Uh, Glenn Berger says linebacker. That group was weak last year. It hasn't been much improvement at the linebacker position during the offseason. Rick May says more depth on both the offensive and defensive lines. Additional help at linebacker would certainly help. And let's see some competition for the place kicker position. Dennis Davis still need more uh, linebacker depth. Gregory Sorko says a kicker, special teams in general, speed at the uh, linebacker, but uh, that uh, may have been addressed in the draft. And then Danny Harrison says character. I'll tell you one thing about the kicker. I, I know in, in many cases uh, on the football team, you want, because of uh, depth needed because of injuries, you want as many people out there. I think there's too much, an awful lot of pressure on, on the place kicker. I think that seriously he should be chosen before. There should not be that, comp that much competition at training camp and in the exhibition season. I just think there's too much pressure. Pick a guy before and go with him. Well, are you worried about the preseason bringing too much pressure to a guy you're going to count on making kicks during the regular season? Yeah, I think I am. Huh. 
You just think no. it would allow him to feel, well, settle in yeah. and be and, at his, be best. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think place kickers are looking for depth that's different than an offensive lineman. Well, I mean, it's, it seems rather clear that they didn't take a guy in the fifth round to cut him. Correct. Unless he completely falls apart. Or so, the other guy is unbelievable. Yeah. So if you give him the job, what would you do then? Get Greg Joseph out of camp entirely well, and then have this guy fall on his face? It's not like you need ar- you need camp arms where you have to throw a zillion passes each day to somebody. You just kick the ball. But what do you do? If you give him, if you lim- if you reduce the numbers, competition yeah. numbers, to one, and that guy has a bad camp, yeah, and everybody's looking around like there's oh always boy. a guy. There's always a guy you can bring in at that point, and it I, might well be Greg Joseph who'll still it, be probably he's a free still agent hanging around. Team. Yeah, uh, I just think if it's Joseph or Seibert, I think you need the the unlike a, an offensive tackle or defensive linebacker, I think you need that guy to feel he really belongs and they trust him, and they're not. I. It's different than other positions. You're taking the exact opposite tack of of. Uh, of uh, Todd Haley during during that, uh, Hard that, Knocks, that kicker. which was that <laughs> kicker. <laughs> right. Um, well, it might be something to be said for that. I, the, to the point of uh, what somebody said about linebacker depth and all that, I think they believe that they did address that. Yes. That's how strongly they believe in in both of those picks, Taki Taki and, and Mac Wilson. So, um, Taki Taki and Mackie Mackie Wilson. And Mackie Mackie. And so we'll see. But um, I, I still think that you're going to see them have at least show – a lot of interest whether they land him or not in Gerald McCoy because I think they feel that um, they want to run a defensive line rotation. They've added Sheldon Richardson. They're expecting Ogan Joby to be good. I know Olivier, Olivier Vernon's there, but I think they feel like if they could get uh, one more guy there that they'd feel really good well, about Well, you must have read that rundown here because we uh, want to know if the Browns should pursue huh. uh, Gerald McCoy. If you do, it's only got to be one year, right? Yeah, I mean, I would think so. We heard Bruce Arians say, you know, obviously not the same player he was four years ago, right. but still productive. And, and so I wouldn't think you would want to get into too many. And plus, his price tag's not going to be How about cheap. Tampa Bay? They, they get rid of him, and then they sign in, in Damakin Sue. I didn't see that signing today. I, I don't know what they – did you see the numbers on what no. that was? I know there was something in what I read today that they were concerned about having cap money to um, – uh, to sign their first round draft choice, right, and so maybe there was a way to structure the Sioux contract that that McNeil wasn't yeah, willing to do. Yeah, because as as you know, McCoy wasn't willing to. As, do. as you know, Tampa Bay was trying to structure something to get a trade. That's how the Browns got involved originally right. in the discussion. Right. Would you like to see him get him? Yeah, sure. I mean, More especially now that he wouldn't he wouldn't cost you a player in a right. trade. Um, yeah, 